Hello everyone, hope you're having the most amazing day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss even more contestants featured on Hell's Kitchen and reveal all they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Salvatore Coppola Appearing in the seventh season of Hell's Kitchen, Salvatore Coppola, a pizzeria chef, didn't leave the best first impression. Much like Rock Harper from Season 3, Coppola decided to use pre-made ingredients for his signature dish, which angered Ramsey deeply. Despite having an awful start, he was quite liked by the other contestants due to his friendly nature. It also somewhat helped that Coppola had a distinctly thick Italian accent and striking looks, which made him more bearable to work with. Unfortunately though, being kind and good looking can only take you so far, since Coppola performed pretty terribly in the kitchen. In general, he made a lot of mistakes like when he burned a batch of capellini during the first dinner service or forgot the name of a dessert that was being offered. While many would think that Coppola was just incompetent, it seemed more like he was under immense pressure and couldn't handle it. No matter the reason, he was still a terrible performer overall and lacked the necessary communication skills to rise up the ranks. Throughout his 7 week run in the competition, Coppola managed to get by without a single nomination. However, since he really only had one good service out of seven on the winning team, he was considered dead weight and was swiftly booted from the competition. Naturally, Coppola was pretty angry about being eliminated, but maturely acknowledged that he messed up too many times. Before leaving the show, he did receive a parting comment from Ramsey, who basically gave him a backhanded compliment. He expressed that Salvatore had a big heart, too bad he couldn't cook with it. Ouch, that must have stung. Following his run on the show, Coppola hasn't been very public with what he's been up to, but there's one detail we know for sure. For a while, he worked at Blue Ink in Boston, Massachusetts, which was owned by Hell's Kitchen runner-up Jay Santos, but this eventually closed down in 2014. If you'd like to learn more about how he's doing, try giving him a follow on his Instagram. You might not have any luck though since his account is private. Boris Polshuk Previously working as a catering chef, Boris Polshuk decided to put his skills to the test in Season 8 of Hell's Kitchen. Claiming that the only way he'd leave the competition would be dead or a winner, it's clear that he had a ton of drive. Polshuk was also incredibly nice and possessed an immense amount of passion which made him easy to get along with, much like the previous contestant we listed. Understandably, the only person he didn't really seem to get along with was Ranjit Branson, who we call the waste of life. To be honest, we can't really blame him. In terms of his talent, Polshuk was pretty decent when it came to challenges winning 4 total but was quite a poor performer during the services. Regardless of the fact that he won 3 services, it's nothing to be impressed about since he was being heavily carried by his team. It's made even clearer that he was a weak link when you consider the amount of times that he was nominated. By the second week, he was already being nominated for his poor performances and was going to be chosen another 4 times. The only reason he was able to dodge elimination so many times was because the chefs that were eliminated before him were far worse in terms of skill. After 8 grueling weeks of competing, Polshuk was finally booted from the competition due to a string of poor performances. Even though he wasn't the greatest chef, he did receive some praise from Ramsey for being very passionate and having a big heart. Returning for the final dinner service in episode 15, Polshuk was Nona Sibley's last pick since she felt he was mentally slow. She wasn't too far off, at least for this service, since Polshuk failed to properly cook his meal three times, which caused an argument. Ultimately though, after four attempts, he was able to get things right and help lead Sibley to victory. Post Hell's Kitchen, Polshuk spent some time as a sous chef at Lizu Restaurant in New York City. However, he eventually stepped things up a notch and became the executive chef at the Loft Steakhouse in Brooklyn, New York. While the restaurant is quite expensive, the food is high in quality and under strict kosher supervision by a rabbi. It's so nice to see that he's doing well. Jonathan Plumley, Debuting in the 9th season of the show, contestant Jonathan Plumley only managed to rank in 10th place. This is an important detail to bring up since he came into the competition with a high level of confidence. During the signature dish challenge, he expressed that Ramsey would be full of it if he didn't like his dish. Let's just say that the famous chef didn't even try his dish since he was offended that he used canned pineapples instead of fresh ones. After making excuses that he only had 45 minutes to complete the meal, Ramsey practically threatened to eliminate him. Aside from having a rocky start, he did eventually prove himself to be one of the strongest links to the blue team. Putting on display his good attitude, solid leadership skills, and talent in the kitchen, it seemed like he was actually going to make it pretty far. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case since Plumley ultimately failed to get along with some of his teammates. This was mostly because he would mistreat any of the chefs who failed to deliver strong performances. With time, his attitude got even worse, but so did his own performances, which led to some clashes with the other contestants. After being nominated three times in a row, Plumley was finally booted from the competition on the eighth week. Before heading out, he did receive a parting comment from Ramsey, who didn't have the nicest things to say. He said that the only thing worse than the pain in Jonathan's neck was listening to him blame everyone else for his mistakes. I was glad to put him out of his misery. 
Coming back for the final dinner service, he was picked to be on Paul Niederman's team, who was eventually crowned as the winner. Following his appearance on the show, Plumlee moved on from being a head chef and became a culinary consultant. If you take a look at his Facebook page, it seems like he currently works as a private chef and is very open about his Christian faith. He mostly posts about his religion and the new beard he's growing out, which makes him look very different. Ray Alonghi Season 11 contestant Ray Alonghi previously worked as an executive chef but hoped to show off his skills in the competition. Being the oldest contestant in the show's history with years of experience in the restaurant industry, Alonghi had a massive edge over the other contestants. He clearly had the upper hand since his signature dish was praised for being cooked to perfection. Thanks to his bank of knowledge, he was able to perform pretty well during the challenges, but the same couldn't be said about the services. Making a mistake during almost every single one, Alonghi did things like drop eggs on the counter or overcook his scallops, which pissed Gordon Ramsay off greatly. While Alonghi could be pretty helpful and informative to his teammates, he was also pretty immature at times. Like when he had a very petty argument with a contestant named Dan Ryan in the sixth episode of the show. After several weeks of tough competition, Alonghi was finally eliminated on the 10th week for performing poorly during a private dinner service. Nominated a total of 3 times, he was only able to make it to 10th place, which is pretty disappointing since he had years of experience. Before parting ways with Hell's Kitchen, Alonghi did receive a parting comment from Ramsey, who was relentless as usual. He stated that Ray's age wasn't the issue, it was his cooking, and I wasn't getting any younger waiting for him to improve. Alonghi did in fact return for the final dinner service and was Janelle's last pick, who eventually became the 11th winner of Hell's Kitchen. Following his time on the show, Alonghi went back to working at his pizzeria, The Purple Eggplants, but this closed down in May of 2019. Currently speaking, he works as the executive chef at Unidine Corporation, which is a dining management company. Royce Wagner As our final entry, we're going to cover a contestant named Royce Wagner, who appeared in the 10th season of the show. Wagner came into the competition with quite a bit of arrogance, claiming that anything he cooked was delicious. To back up his claims, he said that he worked at SDK alongside Rolf Pagano, who was the runner-up of the first season. After tasting his first dish, Ramsey was actually impressed with his technique and seemed to like what he ate. Regardless of the fact that Wagner had a pretty solid signature dish, everything he did after that was god-awful. He was incapable of properly doing simple tasks like making mashed potatoes and gave everyone the worst attitude. Thankfully, his cooking skills did improve as the competition went on, but he was unable to shake off his inconsistency during the services. Widely disliked by most of the contestants around him, we don't really blame them since he was so incredibly full of himself. Especially when you say things like, I'm the Rolls Royce of cooking, it's inevitable that you'll be hated. Finally eliminated on the ninth week after being nominated 4 times, Wagner ranked in 10th place, which is quite low for someone who thinks that their cooking is supreme. As usual, Ramsey gave a parting comment and said that Royce came in promising a Rolls Royce service, but instead his service was more like a broken down car. Time to send Royce to the junkyard. Post Hell's Kitchen, he hasn't gone on to do too much, but is quite busy with the company he started called Three Lines Corp. Well guys, that'll sadly be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. I hope you have a great rest of your day and see you in the next one.